So, you're looking to get a one wheel and join the float life. But you can't decide between the Pint and XR. Well, I'm here to help you today with your decision. We're going to cover everything from costs, technical specs, carvability, and anything else you can think of. And hopefully by the end of this video, we can help you buy a one wheel. What's up everyone, my name is Justin, welcome to Cinematic Souls, thanks for coming by my channel today. So you're probably looking to buy a one wheel, and the biggest question is whether to buy the Pint or XR. I think that's always the toughest question. I was in the same predicament over a year ago when I was researching and looking to buy one wheel. So now that I've been riding my Pint for over a year, got my XR about two months ago, I feel like it's a good time for me to make a comparison video and maybe help you with your decision, and hopefully after today's video, you can actually figure out which route you want to go and at the end of course I'll give you a recommendation as to which board I think you should start off with but without further ado let's just dive right into it. So one of the first things that I want to cover is the cost of the one wheel as I know this is going to be one of the biggest factors when it comes to your decision of which one you want to buy. As you know and if you've done a little bit of research the Pint currently goes for $9.50 and the XR currently goes for $17.99. So you're also going to have to incorporate taxes and depending on which bundle you do end up getting we're talking several hundred dollars more for each of these boards. So over a thousand easily for the Pint and over two thousand for the XR. So I think at this point, usually most people will ask, well, is the XR actually worth two times the amount of a pint? And I think that's going to come down to what you value in terms of what the XR is going to give you and if it's really worth for you to pay that extra thousand. For me personally, when I was looking to buy a one wheel, I was actually looking for something that could get me to work, which was roughly about three and a half miles away. And the pint seemed like a pretty good fit and I was comfortable with the cost. The other factor that also weighed in on my decision was the fact that you couldn't return it once you opened the box and I didn't know any friends or family that owned a one wheel at that point so I couldn't really test one out but I think whichever board you do end up deciding to get just remember to budget correctly and know that there are a lot of accessories that you're probably going to want to purchase down the road for either board. So the Pine is 27 inches in length, 8.5 inches wide and the XR is 29.5 inches in length and nine and a half inches wide. Well, I think the difference is pretty minimal. It's actually quite noticeable when it comes to riding and carrying around. Just know that on the Pint, you'll also have a much more narrow stance due to the board length, and you'll get a wider stance when riding the XR. The XR in general just feels a lot bigger with its shape. When it comes to commuting and getting on and off the bus or going into stores, the Pint feels a lot more discreet with its size, and it just feels a lot easier to carry while walking around. I wouldn't say it's a huge difference or anything major, but it's definitely something to consider if you plan to use it often for work and bring it on a bus or train. When it comes to the weight, the Pint weighs 23 pounds and the XR weighs 27 pounds, and you can really feel the difference when you're carrying them. And so if for any reason you do need to carry your XR for a far distance, I would definitely say it's not ideal, but it's manageable, and the Pint would probably just be a lot better for that situation. When it comes to the tires, the Pint tires an inch shorter than the XR's, which isn't very noticeable. What makes a big difference between them is the width and shape. The Pint tire is 6 inches wide, and it's a lot more rounded, and the X tire is 6.5 inches wide, and it sits a lot more flat edge to edge. The first time you stand on a Pint, you're definitely going to notice how wobbly it initially feels, versus if you get on an XR, it just feels a lot more sturdy because of the width and flatness of it. The rest of the board specs are fairly similar between the two. They both have a 750 watt hypercore brushless motor, they have the same front sensor foot pad, and the battery is obviously bigger on the XR, but they are both NMC batteries. When it comes to the range, the advertised distance on the Pint is 6 to 8 miles and the XR is 12 to 18 miles. I weigh about 160 pounds and I've gotten pretty much the full advertised range on both boards. I know for many people out there, the range factor plays a big part in their decision. For me personally, when I was riding the Pint for over a year, there was only a handful of times I really ever felt that range anxiety. Either I was going on a long adventure with friends in a rural area where there were no outlets, or we were exploring a new city and honestly we just didn't know where any of that 
outlets were. However, in most other situations, if you plan out your route, you're usually going to be okay and you won't have any issues. If you plan to just cruise around your neighborhood or local park by yourself, then I'm going to say the Pine is definitely perfect for you. You really won't need that extra range, but if you already have some friends who ride and you really do plan to do a lot of group rides with them, then it might be worth considering the XR. I do want to point out that there are a lot of legitimate third-party companies out there now that offer extended battery mods that you can swap out on the pint. So if you are comfortable taking the board apart and installing them, that's definitely a great option. But if you don't want to modify your board and just want to keep it simple, then maybe the XR is the route for you and you can avoid constantly charging when you're going on longer rides on a pint. I will say that I do ride with plenty of friends who have the pint that never modify the batteries and we never have issues taking breaks to charge. It's never felt inconvenient to me and usually around a six to seven mile mark, most of us do want to take a good break anyways. And with the Pint Ultra Charger, you can be fully charged in 50 minutes and be good to go afterwards. But with that said, you can still get range anxiety even on an XR. When you start riding a personal electric vehicle, you eventually get in the habit of planning out your next charge station. So it's no different than going on a road trip in a car and planning out how far the next gas station is when the gas light comes on. If you plan accordingly, you really won't ever have that range anxiety anymore. The only time I feel like a range issue could really be a problem is if you go trail riding because you really won't have any outlets around so it would be pretty inconvenient for the pint since you'd only be able to do a shorter ride in a day but if you had the XR well you can really go for a much longer ride. If you do plan to ride this board to work and you think you cut it close on the pint then I'd probably recommend you should get the XR since you really never know what other errands or detours you might want to take on your commute and it's nice to have that option. When it comes to speed the pint goes up to 16 miles per hour and the XR at 19 miles per hour. When I only had the pint, the speed never really felt like a big issue to me. I was more than happy cruising around 14 miles per hour and feeling like I got a good amount of fun and excitement out of it. I know for some folks who are bigger or weigh more than 200 pounds, they'll probably have a lower max speed and hit pushback sooner on the pint, so that's definitely something worth noting in your decision. However, I will say I have friends who are bigger and do weigh a lot more than me, and they never seem to have an issue riding the pint and keeping up. With that said, after riding an XR, you can definitely know this is a speed difference even though it's only a slight difference of 3 miles per hour. I will say that if you are somewhat of a speed junkie, you're probably better off with another personal electric vehicle like an electric skateboard or electric unicycle because they can easily cruise above 20 miles per hour. I'll definitely say the one wheel is a lot more about the experience and the snowboard carve like feeling you get, but if you do want to enjoy some of the extra speed on the XR, that's a personal choice you just have to decide on and if it really matters that much to you. Just remember that I've done group rides with people on pints and XRs together and not once to ever feel like the pints were left behind. If anything, some of my friends that rode pints, they actually rode faster than me at some point. When it comes down to the ride and carve of the pint and the XR, they're definitely pretty different and I think it comes down to personal preference for most people. If you're completely new to board sports, it probably won't matter that much to you on which board you end up getting on first. But I'll say if you're an avid snowboarder or someone familiar with board sports, you'll definitely appreciate appreciate the deeper carves in the pint. The more rounded, smaller tire just allows for a more fun carve experience that'll feel a lot more like snowboarding, but that's not to say the XR doesn't give you the same experience. After riding the pint for a year and then switching to the XR, it did take some getting used to and I wasn't the biggest fan at first, but eventually you learn to carve just as well on the wider tire, and I can say I enjoy both boards equally now when it comes to the ride and experience. So figuring out how you plan to use the one wheel is a big factor in which board you think you should get. If you're really new to board sports and plan to use it to just ride around your neighborhood or local park, then I'm going to say the pint is definitely more than enough to satisfy your needs and have a great time on. If you plan to take it to work like I did, you can still easily manage that too. I used to take my pint to work every day and that was about a 7 mile round trip and I had no issues and loved every moment. If you plan to join friends on long rides, have a long commute, or want to go on day long adventures exploring new cities, or going deep into the woods, doing trips riding. Well then I'm going to say the XR is probably the route for you to go with. With the extra range, you'll have that extra peace of mind and spend less time charging and more time riding. And if you want that extra speed and feel like you got that speed demon in you, well the XR will help you scratch that itch a bit more. 
So hopefully by the end of this video here now, you've been able to kind of pick out which things apply to you and which things don't and what you want to get out of the board. If you're still kind of torn about which board to get, well obviously I'm going to tell you that the Pint is a great board to start off with. There's going to be a lot of people that will tell you to jump straight to the XR, but that's because they've already wrote it, they've already had the experience, they know what works for them, and they love it. Of course they're going to tell you to get it. But for most of you that never have been on a one wheel, I think it's just going to be ultimately a big risk to spend over $2,000 on something you've never even tried. I don't know if you're really going to use it. Maybe you don't either. So I would say start on half the cost, go with the Pint, and you're going to figure out if you really enjoy it. If you become a fanatic of the sport, well then you have a perfect example and reason to upgrade to the XR to use it for what you need to. Either way, I think both are going to be a great purchase. I don't think you're going to regret either. Worst case, you can always sell off the pint and then upgrade to the XR. Or if you don't like either, you can always sell off either one. So. Anyways, I hope this video didn't drag on too long and I actually gave you some helpful advice and tips along the way. And if you do end up buying the one wheel, I'd love to know in the comments below which one you ended up choosing and why. And just come back and let me know how the experience goes. Anyways, thanks for coming by my channel today. I really appreciate your time, guys. So if you have a chance, hit that subscribe button if you want to see more content. Hit that like button if you liked it. And if you didn't like it, well, man. What do you want from me? I don't know, man. In and out of this FaceTime, like all night. Acting like it wasn't your Wi Fi, it was not mine. You ain't been in my zip code in a long time. And your friend said I was the wrong guy, but you forgot why, so it's alright. I ain't saying that I need you, guy. Then at least I can reach you, guy. I ain't saying that I need you, babe